question is for John Stackhouse. I'm not a Christian, but I was just wondering how you decide which aspects of the Bible to follow and which to ignore. For example, the Bible encourages slavery in the New Testament, and the Old Testament even goes so far as to name shaving one's head to be sinful. Do you think it's inevitable that Christians will eventually ignore all teachings of the Bible as society's values and attitudes progress? Yes, I think th there is a sense in which um, folks will say things like, well, parts of the Bible seem absurd to me, uh, so therefore I'll dismiss the Bible. Well, parts of any complex document can seem absurd if you don't know how to interpret it. Parts of the criminal code can seem absurd if you don't understand the context. Parts of any complex legislation can, can seem absurd, and so people can pick and choose phrases out of their context to make them sound absurd. But the Bible is, is, is not a book for kids. The Bible is, is a grown-up book. It's meant to do grown-up things like form people into uh, whole spiritual human beings and form communities of love across cultural lines over the centuries. So we shouldn't be surprised that one can pick and choose at apparently odd things. That's why people actually go to school to learn how to read the Bible carefully, the way they go to school to read law carefully, or they, they go to school to read uh, the physical world carefully. So my, my sense often is, is a little impatience that folks who would never think that they would contradict an astrophysicist, they'd never think that they would contradict an airline pilot, feel quite free to say silly things about religion without actually taking the time to study why this book would say what it does. So my, my sense is you can take or leave the Bible, but please make sure you're taking or leaving a Bible that you've properly studied rather than the one you're taking to pieces. John, this question about uh, whether to take the Bible literally is often raised in connection with same-sex marriage. It's been legal uh, in Canada for a decade now. I'm just, I guess I'm wondering, have Canadian Christians decided it's not actually sinful after all, or whether they've just decided to ignore um, some parts of the Bible which uh, would suggest that it is? Well, I think the, 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 one of the comments made earlier, I think we might make a, an important distinction, Tony, between respecting someone's right to hold religious beliefs and respecting the religious beliefs themselves. I don't think religious beliefs are immune to serious scrutiny. In fact, I think that since 9-11, we would say that some religious beliefs deserve condemnation. That some religious beliefs don't make sense, and I think with the questioner's question as well. If parts of the Bible, you've looked at them seriously, don't make sense, then you're entitled to disagree with them, and even call them foolish. I think we have to respect every person's right to be a human being and decide for him or herself about the great questions of the time. But we don't have to actually respect views that we think are foolish. In fact, in an intelligent society, we, we give and take and, and we argue about what views are So, so did, uh, I guess my point is, when the law changed, did Christians change their views of these things? Well, one of the interesting things, Tony, in Canada is that when the law changed almost a decade ago now, we were promised that the views of those who lost the battle would continue to be respected and their freedom to hold those views would continue to be respected. A decade on, that's not turning out to be the case, I'm sorry to say. And what I find is that often now, when I'm engaged in national conversations like this in Canada, I'm not trying to push a particular view for or against same-sex marriage. That ship has sailed, that's the law of the land. I'm actually trying to see if we can avoid the typical revolutionary turn where the people who used to be oppressed now get to turn the screws on the people who used to oppress them. And it seems to me that's, that's disappointing. It's understandable. I mean, if I've been In what sense is that happening? Well, in, in, in the sense that we find that those uh, individuals who try to articulate a view that's not correct are actually shouted down at university campuses, places that they should be able to speak up, and institutions that are trying to say we would like to opt out of this con consensus are being refused opportunities to participate in Canadian life, including some of our universities.